red. Three, zero, zero. Ah! <laughs> what? You guys. I now have 300 subscribers. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. As I just saw it on my YouTube yesterday, I got 300 and two. I screamed. As of this morning, like right now, I think I have like 310 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. So, um, I said I was going to make another video today on how I applied for my study permit and what's it. So, let's go right into the video. So, I'm going to be telling you my own process. Note that because before, when I was doing my own, when I was processing my application, I want a lot of you to be used. We have different experiences. So, your own might be different. But I'm just going to tell you the steps, what to submit, and my wait times also. I wrote it down, oh, Tori. Disclaimer, oh, I'm not a travel agent <laughs> because a lot of people have been asking me, oh, can you do this for me? Can you? I'm not a travel agent. All the information I'll be giving now are just like based on my own personal experience and all of that. So you can also do more research because your case might be different. And also, I didn't use an agent. A lot of people ask me or have been asking me if I used an agent. I didn't use an agent. So um, you have to submit your application online. So the first step is to have an international passport. Obviously, you cannot apply without your international passport. And if you know that your international passport is going to expire soon, like maybe two years, three years, and your course is like longer, maybe like four years, it's better for you to renew your passport because they won't grant your study permits to exceed the day your passport will expire. Do you get it? Like, if your passport is expiring 2026 and your program is supposed to end 2027, on your study permit, they would write that you have to leave Canada by 2026. But I think when you renew your passport, that can be rectified. That's not a big issue, but it's better your passport is renewed. So first, you have to get an admission. I mean, you have to get admission into a school in Canada. So you can choose to either go to a college or a university. Depending on the course you want to study, um, your funds, like the money you have, because I think college is still like a bit cheaper than university. The difference might not be so much, it might be so much, I don't know, because I'm going to a university, not a college. So you have to apply. And please, when you're applying to any school in Canada, college or university, make sure that it is a DLI, Designated Learning Institute. And that they offer PGWP postgraduate work permits, so that you would be able to use your your so you'd be able to work basically after your school or during your school and all of that. So you can check online, you can check um, IRCC website, or you can just check Google like list of designated learning institutes in Canada that you apply to such a school. Then you submit your online application. So there are some documents. And then we ask for like your statement of purpose, your proof of funds. If you just finished from high school and you want to, and no, this one now is for to start the application. Like after you get your admission, you can choose to get your admission before you apply for your visa or before. But I got my admission before I applied for my visa. So if you just graduated from high school, like secondary school, you can use your work. Check if your school does not need a IELTS. My school did not use IELTS yet. so I used my work to that's why I submitted for my admission so for your online application there are several documents I are going to submit there are documents that are required for you to submit and if you want to add any other supporting documents that you feel can help your application you can add like your statement of purpose so your statement of purpose is basically a letter explaining your intent to study in Canada and why okay your intent why they should grant you your study visa so when you are writing your statement of purpose i wrote my statement of purpose myself my sop some people call it letter of explanation anyone so i wrote my own myself so if you want me to put like um how i wrote it you can let me know in the comment section so maybe i'll make a separate video for that one you make sure you put maybe family ties or something so next you go for biometrics 
so i'm also in this video i'm also going to be telling you my wait times because some people have been asking that oh how long did it take me to get my visa so i got my visa in i don't know if i should say two months or three months that's because i applied in january january 13th they got back to me april i think april 6th or so but the whole of march i didn't hear anything april 6th that was when they asked for my passport the end of march i didn't hear anything from ircc you guys i could not sleep come and see me the middle of the night i'll wake up to be checking my website be my portal you know oh god guys that period they call it under ah what should they show me shaggy i'll wake up in the night i'll be praying eh? pray no no man no man i will pray but you know when you want something now you guys don't pray to god only when you want it. i don't do it don't do it ha ah, the prayer was times one million when i'm walking on the road god please i've been seeing i'll see a lot of tiktok videos youtube videos people have traveled I'm like, god please this is what i want god please do it for me and when it eventually happened i wasn't even expecting it so let's go back to the video you get a, so, a message on your portal always check your ircc portal that gc key portal always check it so they I went for my biometrics. Sorry, I wrote it though. I've forgotten the date I went for my okay. I went for my biometrics January 16th. That was when I went for my biometrics. So when I went for my biometrics, after that they called me for um medical exam. They said I should go for my medical exam. So they told me to go like they sent the letter January 28th. And I think you have one month after the letter comes in for you to do it. This was where another problem now came in. Not a problem, but another issue now came in. So I wanted to do it at IOM because I'm from Lagos. I was living in Lagos. I wanted to do it at IOM Ikeja. I booked and everything. They gave me... When did they give me? I think they gave me February 20-something. And I was like, oh my god, that's too far. So I shall request them for emergency something. They now... Okay, they didn't answer me on time. Uh, so I now did Q Life. And I went to Q Life. Q Life is in, um, I think it's in VI. Yeah, Q Life is on the island also. So that was where I ended up doing mine. So Q Life gave me February 17th. So after Q Life gave me February 17th and I paid, I think I paid 48500 So after Q Life gave me February 17th, I will um, now replied that I can come February 15th. And I've already paid to queue life, so I had to go to queue life. So it wasn't even long after my biometrics that they told me to go for my medical, like 16, 28, like 12 days. So like in one week and five days, they already told me to go for my medicals. And I've been seeing online that some people say when you get a message from IRCC that you should go for your medical exam or your medicals, I ensure that they'll give you visa, even though I was still very, very scared. <laughs> Today is the 17th of February 2023 and I'm going for my medicals today. I've not even gone to the place of my medicals but my appointment is for 9.30 so they said I should come back by like 8, 8.30 and I got there really early so I just came to Yakoyo to get something to eat then after I'll go for my medicals. So after my medical exam then okay also some people do upfront upfront medical like before ircc request then they submit it but my own was not upfront when you're going for your biometrics um there'll be a letter or something that they'll send to you you have to print that out so after the medical exam they sent me a message february 28th i did my medical exam february 17th they sent me a message february 28th that I passed my medical exam. Hey guys, today is March 1st. Uh, sorry, pardon my mango, pardon my hair. I was just in my house. So I just saw on my R IRCC portal that I passed my medical exam. <laughs> you guys, today is March 1st. They sent the they sent it on the 28th of February that I passed my medical exam then i did my i had my medical test on the 17th of february february 17th so now i'm waiting for a correspondence letter then for them to request my passport <laughs> guys i'm happy <laughs> guys i'm so happy i just hope everything will go on fine from here now and then 
I was now waiting for a passport request. Because when you pass your medical exam, the next thing is passport request. They told me February 20 that I passed my medical exam. I was expecting that, okay, like, first week in March or second week in March, I'll get passport request. They were like, you, we are going to shock you. The whole of March, nothing. Until, I even like, at one point there, I just forgot about it. I just, because it was giving me sleepless nights. So at one point, I just had to like, mm-mm, mm-mm, they are not going to stress me. So I was still going, my normal activities, still going to school, you need like stress and everything. So one day, if you are in lag, you know, to be shang, one concert that to be shang did in uni lag. So I was with my friend that day, we wanted to go. I just saw a, a mail from IRCC and I was like in public, but she opened the mail and I logged into my website and I saw passport request, you guys, I screamed. <laughs> Okay, first I was like on the line as I saw the mail, so I just like excused myself from the line. My friend was like, oh, "What's going on?" I just told her, "I'm coming." I'm coming. As I saw it, there, I screamed. My friend was like, "What happened? What happened?" I was like, "Not you know now." I was still trying to hide this because nobody knew. You guys, nobody, only my daddy, because it was my daddy that did it for me. My daddy is so sweet. So it was my daddy that did it for me. Nobody knew in my family said because. We were scared, not that anything, but oh, Sha, that was another story. So, I shall got the password request to April 5. Yeah, guys, I just got my passport request for my Canadian visa. Oh, you guys should shout! You, oh! <laughs> you guys, I mean, you know, don't, don't, mind, don't mind that, that voice, don't mind that person. <laughs> So I'm so I just, proud of you, oh bro. God, this man. <laughs> so I just received the mail and I was really, really scared to so open it. I just opened it and I saw original passport request. And you know what that means? Once you get the password request and you submit your passports and they return your passport to your stamp, babe, you are traveling. I am going to Canada. I'll meet you guys in Nigeria. Passport request and I saw correspondence later, so I had to go and submit my passport. <laughs> Another shaggy, <laughs> Another because when I got to um, VFS Global to submit my passport, they now said a new rule just came out. Though. I don't know how they said the rule just started, I think, yesterday. I mean, I didn't see it on their website. Normally, if you are coming to submit your passport, it doesn't take time, you just enter, submit, and then go. But this one, they said you have to book an appointment if you want to submit your passport. How? When I now went online, no, that okay, let me try to book the appointment. The date I saw was I went there on like maybe on the seventh or the tenth or something. I saw twenty something. Eh? That was the earliest date, and twenty something way I'm supposed to have traveled by then. So I just saw some people around. Then I said, okay, there's something I can do. I can go to um korea plus is just like on the same line as that vfs office that i'll just give them that you help me submit it and i'll pay okay how much did i pay i paid was it 12 or 15 thousand i paid to those korea plus people for them to help me put it inside vfs office something i can easily submit by myself but because of their new one so after submitting it i was scared because ah what if something happened? But because I was not the only one, and that was like the only alternative, and people were like, okay, it's safe. So that was what I did. So I now, I shall have got a message like the tracking and everything. Oh, my password's already in Abuja. My password is back in Nigeria. Um, yeah, Abuja. Oh, back in Lagos. Sorry, my password is back in Lagos. So when it was now time to go and pick my passport, they told me my password was ready to come to be picked I mean, for pickup so i went there so you can choose to use your um, career i think it's eighteen thousand something but i went there to pick it up myself and it didn't even take time so that's all after online after getting admission online application biometrics medical exam passport requests 
correspondence letter, passport submission, then passport pickup. My own was just like, let's say two months, but your own might be more or your own might be less because I've heard so many stories. So whatever, however it is, I wish you all the best in your application. Bye.